Good happy Thursday morning, June 30th, 2022. I'm Riley King. Welcome to this Thursday morning edition of your morning news update right here on the Riley King Radio Network. Let's get started right now. First up, New Hampshire health officials report three new COVID-19 deaths. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. And now to the COVID-19 pandemic in New Hampshire tonight. The state is announcing 302 new cases. 70 COVID positive patients are in hospitals right now. 17 of them are receiving COVID specific treatment. There are also sadly three new deaths bringing that total to 2,582. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. UMH Research warns Granite State climate change already underway. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. The opioid epidemic is a life and death issue not a Republican or Democratic one. That's why I voted against my party's FDA nominee, because he was more of the same. And New Hampshire's had enough of that. Warmer and wetter with more extreme weather. That's the state of New Hampshire's climate, according to Mary Stampone with the University of New Hampshire. All of the ends of the spectrum are kind of getting worse along with the overall general increased warming and increase in precipitation. And those trends are expected to continue into the future. Research released by UNH warns that the Granite State's climate is changing now. Warmer winters causing problems for snow-driven tourism. It is sad for the Northeast, you know, that we'll have more Christmases without snow. Um, you know, a constrained ski season. And bigger, more frequent storms, creating more of an ideal breeding ground for harmful bacteria in our ecosystem. When we have these bigger storms, we have more uh, water running off the landscape and washing off pollution and washing off soil. And that pollution in soil gets into our lakes and basically um, helps that bacteria grow. The report looked at data from 10 communities in the state backed by science to map out the future. All of these climate changes that are impacting the, the, you know, both the physical and social systems with which we interact are all, all you know, being impacted by climate change and all um, affecting the economy, um, our natural resources and our health. And if steps aren't taken soon, UNH says by the year 2100, New Hampshire could expect 50 to 60 days above 90 degrees each year. But by lowering emissions and greenhouse gas, that number could be cut in half. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. AG's office identifies Manchester shooting victim. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Tonight, a deadly shooting in Manchester is being ruled a homicide. The Attorney General's office says an autopsy shows 22-year-old Isaac Landry died from a gunshot wound to the chest. Police found Landry near the Rite Aid on Elm Street last night. The people involved in the shooting have been identified and we're told there's no danger to the public. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Sweden and Finland set to join NATO. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. At Fidelity, it's easy to start investing with zero minimums to open an account. Invest on your own with zero account fees. Or we'll manage your investments for you with zero advisory fees. There are zero reasons to invest anywhere else. Fidelity. The war in Ukraine and major news tonight, that Russian invasion now prompting historic moves at a NATO summit in Madrid. President Biden and other leaders formally inviting Finland and Sweden now to join the alliance. And President Biden increasing U.S. military commitments in Europe, including a permanent presence in Poland. 
Vladimir Putin responding tonight and ABC's chief White House correspondent Cecilia Vega traveling with the president in Spain tonight. With Russia's brutal campaign in Ukraine grinding into its fifth month, NATO today formally inviting Sweden and Finland to join the alliance in the largest expansion in decades and the U.S. stepping up its military commitments. We're sending an unmistakable message, in my view, and I think yours as well, uh, that NATO is strong, united. At the NATO summit in Madrid, President Biden announcing more military power to Europe, including the first permanent military headquarters in Poland, troops to Romania and the Baltics, two F-35 stealth fighter squadrons to the U.K., and two Navy destroyers to Spain. Article 5 is sacrosanct. We mean it when we say an attack against one is an attack against all, every inch. It comes as NATO puts 300,000 troops on high alert in response to Russia's war in Ukraine. Leaders adopting a new mission statement declaring Russia as the most significant and direct threat to the region's stability. Ukraine has yet to be admitted to NATO. President Volodymyr Zelensky addressing members from Kyiv today, asking for more weapons and money. <laughs> and delivering this warning about the risk to Europe. Zelensky asking which countries will Russia come for next? Poland, Moldova, the Baltics? The answer, he warned, could be all of them. And Vladimir Putin has just responded. He said he actually doesn't have a problem with Finland or Sweden joining NATO like he does with the prospect of Ukraine joining this alliance. But he is, David, delivering a warning tonight. He says he is not mincing words, but if NATO decides to send troops or military equipment to these two countries, quote, Moscow would be forced to respond. David? Cecilia Vega live in Spain for us tonight. Cecilia, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stefan. Okay, there you go on that video and that report. That does it for this morning news update right here on the Riley King Radio Network. Thank you for tuning in and listening. Have a great day, everyone, and goodbye.